I'm channeling my inner Tim Holtz. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the studio. I know that YouTube growth experts say, don't jibber jabber in the start of your video, get right into the meat. But here's the thing. Today I am going to channel my inner Tim Holtz, but also send out a thank you to Tim. I've known Tim for, well, years. I had short hair. But one of the things I love that Tim does for the crafty creative industry is encourage people to try things they might not normally try. I used to think the only thing you did with distress inks was, you know, ink up the edge of a photograph. But since becoming a card maker, I've had so much fun with Tim's products. And today I am going to get messy. I'm gonna spray stuff and we are gonna have a holtz of a good time. Should trademark that, Tim. To see those projects, stick around. They're coming up next. I'm even wearing plaid. Here's a look at some of the products I'll be using today. Last weekend, or maybe it was the weekend before, I was watching Tim Holtz on his YouTube channel, and I'm going to be sure to link that below in my description. And I saw him using some of these oversized stencils, and I think they're amazing. So I placed an order at Simon Says Stamp, picked up these three, I've got my grit paste snowfall, my little palette knife. I've got a couple pieces of Simon Says Stamp heavy 130 pound weight. I thought I had some of the Tim Holtz heavy stock, but I don't. So what I'm gonna do is kind of do a mishmash pattern like Tim did, because I thought that was so cool. Like it would never occur to me to only use part of a stencil. So I'm gonna narrow it down and we're gonna go ahead, add some of this, and then of course, I'll let it dry completely, come back, and then I'm going to make some cards. So let's get started with the messy stuff. I'm going to take a little bit of tape here, just a bit on the back, like that, okay? And let's get that mouse out of the way. I think on this one though, I am gonna be a little more linear. Here's what's cool. This is a four and a quarter uh, wide pat, pat size <laughs> cardstock. And these just fit right here, right? So it almost fills that whole panel. I did not know these tags were this big and I think that is very cool. I've got my grit paste, I've got my palette knife, and I have a paper towel here, and I can go ahead and wipe this all off. The nice thing is too, because I'm in my new space, my bathroom is right behind me, and there's a tub that I can, well, clean things out. So that's very exciting. It's a whole new world. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of get this stirring. Isn't that good? Look at that. White. There's a little piece of black in there. I'm not sure what that is, but you know what? We're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna take out our Snowfall grit paste, that's probably way too much. I have no idea what I'm doing, but sometimes that's part of the fun. And I'm just gonna push it through the stencil, All right? And I am going to do this whole panel on this one. I'm gonna do a partial pattern on the other one because I kinda wanna have all these show up. And also, I'm thinking I'm going to be using some of the holiday st spray stains because I've got them, and I'm channeling my inner Holtz today, because why not? You know, it's just paper, I'm have some fun. So I'm just gonna scrape most of this excess off because there's no color, right? So I'm not too worried about that. Let me go here, get underneath, and well, I guess we just <laughs> lift straight up. Oh. That is so cool. Now, I am going to, let's see here. I'm gonna come over here on the side and just scrape this because I don't need that much on the side there. We are going to put this back in. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go wipe this off and rinse off my stencil and then we'll make a second panel. Now I've got the holiday knit and I am going to do this one a little more randomly. So I think I had a little too much paste, so let's just let's just try it. I got a clean piece of paper here. And I'll just do kind of oh, kind of a little swath down the down the center. And just kind of kind of make the pattern random like I saw Tim do. 
Now this is very hard for me to do random because I, I tend to be so linear, but you know what? I think this will be just fine. We'll just, we'll just have part of it. And now let's get that off. I hope it works. But I think either way, I'm going to get that, listen to that good sound, uh, that cool sort of texture. All right, go like that. I'm gonna close this up. I will put some saran wrap over this later. I don't have any up here right now. And we'll just lift it up. And now I have that pattern. That's kind of cool. And I'm going to take the tape off because I don't necessarily need that. And I'm just going to scrape a little of that edge. But look at that. That's kind of cool, right? Just sort of this random piece that's going to work its way into my design. Now, I will set this aside as well. And when these are completely dry, we're going to come in and add some color. I decided to let these dry overnight. I'm not sure what little black specks are in there. Who knows? I don't know what that is, but this looks really cool. And check it out. The Simon Heavy Stock is so heavy duty. It really does hold these beautifully. So here's what I've got. I've got two of the newer Distress Mica stains, and this is Cocktail Party and Shiny Bobble. And these are both part of one of the trios. So I'm going to shake them up really well, and I'm going to do one color on one and one color on the other. That's it. I'm not getting super fancy here. This one, I want to be the cocktail party. Oh my gosh, that smells crazy. Look at that. And I'm going to just add it into this. I really do want my, my whole panel to just be this color, all right? And maybe a little more in those center areas. All right, that is a little kooky. And that is what it looks like right now. So I will set this aside to dry, okay? And this one, I do want it to drip. I wanna, I wanna make a drippy drip. So how do I do that? Maybe go like that, right? Test it. And then I'm just going to let it kind of run down. Can you see that? I'm really, I'm really saturating it. It's kind of hard to see here. But that is kind of cool. And we're just going to let it run down the front of this panel. Like that. Actually, let's do it a little bit more up here. It's very cool. Letting that drip. See them going? I know it's kind of hard, but I can't. I really do need the drips to go down. Like that. Ooh, it's got a, it's got a ooky, kind of kooky. Okay, we're letting those go like that. All right. Now I'm going to take this and set it aside, and next we can work on our greetings for these cards, which are going to be die cuts. I've got a few different word and shadow dies. The one in the middle is newer. This is something I designed for this season for the holidays. Joyful is an older one, and this Mary is also older. In fact, this one matches my little circular ornament, but I can't find it in the move upstairs. <laughs> so, so we're going to pick one of these, or th two of these, but I am going to use some of my matte gold cardstock or my matte silver. So I'm going to get some pieces out for here. I've also got some white cardstock, so we'll go ahead and get some die cutting done so that I can get these greetings prepped. So I've done all my die cutting, and I'm going to spray just off camera here on the floor in my studio to keep it away from the camera and my nose. Um, I'm going to spray these so I can start building up some dimension. Just line it up like that. These base layers, the shadow layers, are a little easier to line up because they're chunky. And I always use my 
gross tweezers. That's for lack of a better word. I call them gross tweezers just because these are the ones that I do this sort of thing with. All right. Again, just kind of pinch it. Get that lined up. And I'm going to press that down with my block. I have my little uh, tittles up here. And let's see, how does that look? Pretty good, right? Then I get some dimension. Now I'll go ahead and add the glue, spray glue to the back of these two. And we will start. These are a little trickier just because, you know, all those little swoop de doop de letter forms. The This type of font is called a slab serif because of the flat feet and the flat serifs. Um, and that is referred to as a slab, which is what the style of all my word dies are. You have a little bit of wiggle room with spray adhesive, not a lot, right? But a little, okay. So joyful, that looks good. And again, I'm going to press that down. Give it some good pressure. To put this one onto the base, I'm going to use my liquid glue for that because I just think it's nicer to have a little wiggle room. I will grab my non gross tweezers. And let's see here, I'm just gonna take my liquid glue and put little beads on the back. And then we will pop the joyful, the pretty sh silver onto this. Okay, and I'm gonna wiggle it a little. And that's why I like the liquid glue. Let's wiggle you right there, okay. And press. And we can go ahead and add our little tittle. Another thing that I love here, let me see which one is this size. Oh, if you have any oozing glue, just if you have a little craft pick or something, oh, it's rolling. Just take it and you it will dry clear, but you can also just run along, scrape it, and then just wipe it off. Let's put the tiny tittle here. Like that. Just a dot of glue. Then you're going to pick it up and just build it, build, build the dimension right on top here. That. Make sure you have the right side as well. Right there. It's a little oozy on the side. I'm gonna just clean that out a little, getting a little much glue. I'll just put it on the back of my hand for now. There we go. And <laughs> glue, it's a moisturizer and an adhesion agent. And then just put the shiny layer on top. Ooh, that's where our little, there we go. You know what? We're gonna call that gold well, or silver. We're golden or silver. All right, and I will do the same off camera to glue together the merry greeting. Now I have both my joyful greeting with all that beautiful shine and my Mary, okay? So the greetings are ready and I will set these aside. Not quite done with these yet. I'm going to take some of this fluid acrylic ink. I've got a little bit of water fan brush, which I'm gonna wet down here a little bit. And I'm gonna take my little brick here and just put a little on like that. Just kind of swirl it around there. And then I'm just gonna flick on a little bit. Just now let's try some up here. Let's see. I just want to have a little snow up top here on this one. And I don't mind there are big blobbies. I think it's going to be pretty. And then in here, just kind of down the pattern. Like that. I wanted a little more in here. There we go. There we go. There we go. 
sometimes you need a little extra water mixed in to get those little teeny tiny blobbies. Now I will let that dry and it's going to take a while because we have still so much of the mica stain but when that's dry and I get cleaned up we'll proceed. These are pretty much dry but now there's still quite a bit of give to the paper so I'm going to trim these down a little bit. So let's come in here and let's take a quarter inch off of this side, flip it, and I'm going to take a quarter inch off this side. Okay. And I think I would like to keep most of this. So let's go with five. That way, well, you know what? I'm going to go like this. And come over here and give it a five. So that way we have a panel that is three and three quarters by five inches. And I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's beautiful. Take a quarter inch off. Flip it. And let's go right there. And I think I'll just take most of it off here at the bottom. Like. Oh, cutting through the paste there. All right. Now I want you to see. Look at the shine and the beautiful mica. Oh. I'm going to go ahead and prep my card bases here. Now this is 11 inches by four and a quarter because I'm going to make two top folding USA2 cards in more of the portrait orientation. So there's one and two. Just hold that down and score. Give that a good press. That and this one here. Okay. Nice, good press. I will go ahead and tape both of these closed with a little of my pink Easy C tape, just because I like my cards to stay flat while I am adhering my elements. All right. I have my pieces, my fancy schmancy pieces in a little book right now, that little book that I like to put things in to flatten. So as soon as I feel they are flat enough, we will commence and finish cards. I have been keeping my sentiment strips in these lovely little pop-up boxes from Simon Says Stamp. And I am going to locate, if I can, a set that I have for Christmas somewhere in here. I've tried to get better at uh, making, oh, there it is, my Christmas sentiment strips, because I think I want to use one of those or possibly two. I also am keeping all of my sentiment strips in these little pockets here. And it's nice for, you know, when you want to just pull them all out. Plus, you can keep all the little loose pieces because these strips are designed. Oh, there's a nice season's greeting one. Look at that. Uh, oh, there's another season's greetings. I might not even have to cut anything today. Let's pop those out. Oh, look at that. So I have some ready to go because when you cut them apart, you just save all of them. So. I am going to pick, well, maybe both are season's greetings. I like the ones that are already done. So, or I do have Happy Christmas. And then, of course, any other any other thing that I would want to cut. You can also foily, <laughs> foily. You can also foil these. They are printed with a toner-based ink. I rarely do that because, well, you know what? Sometimes you just got to keep it simple. So, in fact, why don't we just trim these to size? I brought out my little trimmer for this. And we'll just come in here and flip it. I think that needs to come in a little bit more like that. Yeah, that looks good enough. I'm going to take my favorite pen for this. This is a Copic marker. This is T10. What I like to do is just because 
This is printed on white cardstock. I like to just color in the sides, which gives it the look of black core cardstock, which I think is kind of cool. So I'll do that. So after these were in the book, they did flatten pretty nicely. I mean, that's pretty nice. And then I put, I went overkill with the foam tape on the back. But I think that's okay because, right, we want we want to make sure that they stay nice and flat. So I'm going to take the backers off, framing margin space, pop that there, and pop that down. I love a crisp white note card. I think it really makes your design pop. Nice. They're actually pretty flat. Kind of surprised about that, but they look great. I do have another idea, and I don't know if this will work. First things first, I'm gonna put my Joyful probably lower on the card, I think, maybe, or maybe even all the way down to really allow that to shine up there. And of course, I have my little Seasons Greetings that I will probably pop right there. Uh, set that aside for a minute because I did have an idea here. Now, I don't know if this is gonna look good, it might not, but what I am thinking about doing is <laughs> bringing out the pattern a little bit and I might use a little bit of pigment ink. Let's, let's see what this looks like, okay? This is, I have a, two of these. The one that has the tape on it, this signifies to me, this is the one you use for messier projects. This is going to be your less than pristine. So I'm just gonna put some on here first. I'm going to take a brush that I keep for things that's, well, actually, I guess I could do it this way first, right? Pick up off there too. I just kind of wanted to enhance, oh, <laughs> let's see here, enhance that pattern a little bit, right? Just kind of, oh, nope, that's not right. I don't want to pick up color. I just want to tap it down, possibly to bring some depth into this. I don't know if that's really doing much. Actually, it kind of is. It's lightening it a bit. Go over that pattern a bit. Look at me, just, you know, on the fly, just doing, just doing things that are kind of nutty. Eh, it's not bad. I think it took away some of my shine, but you know what? We're going to keep it. I went ahead and I added the shadow layer to the Mary die because I felt like it was just too floaty, right? Because I do want this to be in the center and I just went ahead and found a strip that said Christmas because this is just going to say Merry Christmas. And for the joyful, I, I was playing around with cutting that little greetings, but you know what? Sometimes I just like something to stand on its own. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's take some liquid adhesive on the back of Joyful. Again, I'll use my, let's slide you out of the way, my connect glue here. Just kind of spread it around generously because it is going to be going on something kind of bumpy. So I want to make sure to have enough, but not, you know, not too much, right? And I want it oozing every which way. So I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. But also, I think this is so pretty on its own. Like there's just so much happening. Look at how the spray stains sort of avoided parts of the, the little star pattern. And I actually really like the three drips. So, you know, you never know. You never know what's gonna happen, but I love anchoring this at the base. So let's just visually plop you down. Just want to make sure it's the same from side to side, right about there. I guess I could bring in, it's hard to fully employ the use of a ruler when you have little dip downs there, but you know what? I think that's going to be great right there. Now I'm going to have to press this pretty, is that? Let's get over a little bit more. All right, let's see. I hope you're going to stick. I'm going to go. Now I'm going to press this really hard because it's going to it's going to hopefully pick up and adhere where the glue is. So we'll see. And if that doesn't work, you know what I could do? I'm going to keep this up here. I could just go foam square route too. 
All right, so let's come in here. And again, we've got our little Mary. So I'm going to add liquid glue to the back. Now, back in the day when I first started designing dies, I used to leave some openings for the shadow layers. I've kind of moved away from that. That's just sort of my personal evolution as a product designer. I used to think every little circle had to be cut out, but I don't, I don't really think that way anymore. I kind of like it when it's more solid, but I think it works here. This is a very old die. In fact, I hope if you're interested, oh, if you're interested, I hope there are ones still available. Well, we're just going to put that right in the center over our pattern, maybe up a little bit like that. <laughs> See, it doesn't want to stick. You got to hold it. You got to hold it to the texture. Hold on here. Let's see. We centered. We centered a little bit. Yes, and press. Just really press that in. Give it time to adhere. Like that. All right. And I've just got one thin foam square that I cut in half here. And that's just going to go right underneath. Right? And I could put a little dab of glue on either side just so that it has maybe a little more to grab onto, but this I just want to go right under here like that. So simple. And yeah, the foam squares are really helping that to stick. Okay. But I thought thin would be nice because that just gives it a pretty little pop, but not more than the Mary. To finish off the cards, this one I'm leaving as is. So we're sliding you out. And just on this one, because the greeting is smaller, I'm just going to add a few of my little, these are from Studio Katya, just some gold foil. Let's get you cleared. Got my liquid glue here and try to get it in the center where I can get it above the texture and Oh, let's use the cool pin side. All right. Yes, I love that. Oh, boop. That was a boop. Didn't know it was happening, but it happened. Boop. Actually, that might not be enough. Boop. There we go. When you have that extra texture, boop, sometimes you need extra glue. And boop. There we go. And that card is done. And here are my finished card projects. Me channeling my inner Tim Holtz. What do you think? I mean, look at, oh gosh, I hope you can see how pretty this is in the light. Look at the shine from the mica. Like it's so beautiful. And transitioning into the splatter with just the little drips here. And again, look at that angle. Oh, it's just beautiful. That's the shiny bobble color. And then this one is the cocktail party, which is this gorgeous holiday pink. Cause look at, you really see how pink it is and look at how cool that texture is. And yet I'm still able to kind of bring it in with a little bit of my own minimal style with that framing. But I love how these card projects turned out. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's tutorial below in the YouTube description box. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and become a subscriber today. I would love to have you. For more holiday card ideas, check out the two thumbnails below where I'll share some more Christmas cards and I will see you in those videos.